Another win. Another win for the Pistons, which makes it two out of their last three. Uh, because there's no way they were going to really beat the Milwaukee Bucks. But it's it's good to see them get back uh, to maybe sort of respectable levels. You can start to see some of the guys play better. Uh, and Orlando is, of course, just not a very good team. But they are a team that, at least right now, is right there with the Pistons in the standings. So you need as many wins against teams like Orlando that you can get for later down the line. The biggest takeaway, at least for me, from this game is we finally got to see more of what we wanted to see out of uh, Steve Mihailuk. He played really terrific basketball off the bench, came in with 12 points. See here, four of eight from three, which is what you got him for. It's a team that's in desperately need the shooters, and Svi was supposed to be able to provide that for you. Uh, you know, since coming on last year through the uh, through the preseason and even through like the summer league, and he got 22 minutes tonight, and he made the most of them. The tonight's win is the reason it's impressive to me isn't the opponent that they faced, but it's really how they got the win. The Pistons controlled most of the game except for the the first quarter. Um, they were down by eight, and then they were down 11. Uh, early into the second quarter, and then from really just there on out, it was uh, really all Pistons. So th in the third quarter, Orlando only scored 15 points. Second or fourth quarter, they only scored 18. So to hold the team to 33 points, really no matter who it is in the NBA uh, in a single half, is really excellent. Uh, really excellent defense from the Pistons, and it was there's a lot of good defense from guys that you wouldn't necessarily expect it from. It's, you know, even in the second half. Derrick Rose had some nice contests in the second half. Same, um, same from a guy like Luke Kennard, who played uh, who played terrific tonight. Twenty points, seven assists for Luke. Two steals there to kind of go along with with the defense we just talked about. Four rebounds, and you were getting you were getting contributions from guys that maybe you you only hope to get contributions from them, but it's not something you certainly bank on. So Luke, you can you can pretty much bank on getting something from Luke now because he's worked his way up into the rotation like that. Uh, but guys like Svee, guys like Christian Wood, who had 12 points, four boards tonight. And it was an off night from some of your better players. So, you know, Andre only had seven points. You know, he, he added in 18 rebounds because that's just what Andre does. Uh, Blake only had 17 Langston Galloway, who's been one of the more reliable players for the Pistons uh, this year, 4 of 11, only 12 points. Bruce Brown, uh, Bruce Brown, 13 and 7, um, 13 7 boards, 2 assists. So you like what you saw from him. Derrick Rose, 1 of 11. So if you had told, you know, everyone that Derrick Rose, uh, Andre Drummond, and Blake Griffin would only combine for, let's see here, 26 points, that's a game, you know, Pistons play 82 games. If you're going to get 82 of those games, you're probably going to say the Pistons lose like 75 of them because you just don't expect if the Pistons aren't getting contributions from those three guys for them to win. Again, no matter how no, ma no matter how bad the opponent is. And it's you have to you do have to take the game with a grain of salt because even though you liked what the even though you liked the contributions that you got from guys who are um, you know not the main focus of the team. They're not guys who you necessarily run the offense to. There still is the matter that the Pistons with this win are five and three at home and they only have six wins total. So there's still all the, all the road concerns where it looks like, you know, five and three at home, six and 11. So that puts them at one and eight on the road and the magic with the loss tonight are own seven um, away from Orlando. So you definitely have things like that working in your favor. Um, Albert Lou says, I don't know how I'd react if the Pistons lost to the Magic. I mean, probably the same way you'd react to some of the other games that the Pistons have dropped. Uh, you know, they lost to the Bulls. I'm pretty sure they lost to the Bulls twice, and the Bulls are terrible. They lost to the Hornets on that, um, that Malik Monk buzzer beater. So the Pistons definitely have lost a bit. The Wizards, the Pistons definitely have lost to bad teams this year. And right now it's just about getting wins, no, no matter really kind of who they're against or how you get them. But the – the best thing about tonight's win, obviously, is that one you got it, and then you got again the 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 role players and you know, the the bench players contributing for you, and you liked what you saw from the defense in the second half, where again the Pistons only allowed 33 points, which allowed them to control the entire second half.
And really from the point in the second quarter where they were down 11, I think it was 23 to 34 in favor of Orlando. Uh, you know, from that point on, the Pistons really just controlled the entire game. And it was a game down the stretch where you didn't have to, uh, you know, you didn't have to worry. And much like the Hawks win that they got the other night, where they won by 25, it's it's nice to have games where you're not stressing for it down the, uh, down the stretch. Albert Liu said so the Pistons lost to the Hawks in the second game of the season back in October. Yeah, like I said, they lost to bad teams, and which is why their record is, you know, six and – uh, six and ten, six and eleven. Um, but yeah, so the Pistons aren't the Pistons aren't a good team. Um, not yet, anyway. You hope to you hope to get some more of that consistency. One, two, this preseason. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So, well, with the six <laughs> with the six one Pistons, you hope that you can have uh, more of this moving. Forward, their next game that they have is uh, they play again at Charlotte, which is where they lost on the Malik Monk buzzer beating three. Um, and they do that on today's Monday. So they play the Hornets on Wednesday, and you hope that they can put together a, a nice stretch here where, again, they beat the Hawks. They won two out of their last three. If they can put together three of the last four uh, against a team like Charlotte, who, again, is right in the area where the Pistons are. Uh, so the Pistons six and eleven. Charlotte right now is six and eleven, and something's got to give. But we just talked about the Pistons' awful, uh, awful away record, where they're one and eight. Albert Lou said it's stunk. The Pistons have to beat bottom feeding teams to keep pace. They, yeah, they have to be really everybody to keep pace. But um, kind of going into the season, if you were going to give the Pistons games against Charlotte, against uh, against Atlanta. Those are games that you would expect to win more times than not because while the Pistons aren't the best team in the league, they're certainly not worse than those teams, or at least they weren't expected to be. And they've had, uh, they've, they've had, of course, a multitude of injuries. They've had some rest days for guys like Blake and uh, and Derrick Rose. Of course, we know Reggie Jackson is hurt, and he uh, he should be making his comeback pr- probably within the next two weeks. Um, so that'll be that'll be a nice boost for the Pistons, and then we can see. Uh, really how some of those guys go back to filling um, roles that may be smaller roles, essentially, just roles that aren't quite as important. Uh, you know, guys like Bruce Brown should get less minutes. Um, Don Maker only got three minutes tonight, so it'll be interesting to see if Dwayne Casey continues to um, phase him out of the rotation or if there are going to be nights where he's still getting more minutes than a guy like Christian Wood, who, it, you know, tonight's only, of course, a one-game sample size, but, you know, the, the results of tonight certainly wouldn't expect you to to yield themselves to uh, to the conclusion that Don Maker should be playing um, really at all or just any more than any more than Christian Wood does. Uh, what we have for uh, the the last couple games, I know I haven't been here. I haven't been here for the Lions game. I was with uh, Chicago. I was in Chicago, excuse me, with our Sports Carnage crew. So me and then Don Drysdale from um, Detroit Sports Nation. Who, if you guys follow the page, I'm sure you know. Um, but I went with Don and the Sports Carnage. So Matt, Paul, Dylan, and then uh, and then Dylan's dad. But we all went to Chicago. We went to the Northwestern and Minnesota football game. Which was a really fun experience. Uh, got played played some poker and just kind of weaved our way around the city, if you will. But we do have our Sports Carnage podcast. We are recording tomorrow. We're probably dropping on Thursday. And we'll certainly be talking about the trip. So if you guys are listeners, check it out. And then if you're not, uh, you know, check it out and just let us know if you like it. Rate, subscribe, review, all of that. Uh, really, all of that fun stuff. But that is that's more or less what we have from the. Um, from the Pistons tonight, again, Luke was uh, Luke really good at facilitating the ball tonight. He shot pretty well, uh, you know, to, to to add along to that. But, you know, if you're ever talking about a, a night where it's Luke Kennard and his shooting isn't the – his shooting uh, isn't the main focal point, what that really allows you to do is – get get other guys in involved and it makes him you know way more of a dynamic player when he does have the ball in his hands and he is able to dish out the rock to guys uh you know two guys like Blake and Drummond and try and get them just some easy buckets same with a guy like Langston Galloway who didn't shoot well tonight but he did add five assists 
Um, and all of his points were from the three. So his four of 11, they were all three-point shots, which is a better four of 11 than if you're only shooting twos because we know, obviously, as you're making them, you're getting more of a return on them. And then you know, Blake finding his footing. He did have the best plus minus tonight at plus 21. Uh, and you're just looking at the – if you're just looking at the box score, it's really not nothing too impressive. 17, five points, two boards in 31 minutes. So him trying to still feel his way around, but it's nice when the guys around him can pick him up and can get the Pistons the win, the wins, excuse me. So when Blake comes back to you no know, near All Star level, like we know he's capable of playing, those guys, those bench guys and those you know role players don't have to do as much to keep the team afloat. So have you heard a major announcement in the NBA of a possible new playoff format and a tournament bracket style a few days ago? I did hear that. I don't know the. The one thing that, or at least about the announcement, that's um, that's really tough to kind of see, is you know what would the in tournament style do? Would it be like a lottery? I think if you're going to have a tournament, that should be it. Is it's a tournament for the lottery teams to determine the draft position, but just a regular in season tournament. Uh, if there's no added benefit at the at the end, uh, you know playoff seeding should still kind of not be determined by that. So I don't know why you would do an in-season tournament at all. It's not like you're going to start relegating teams, you know, kicking teams out of the league or anything like that. Um, new playoff format and then the 1-16s, to 16s, that's something that I do like in theory. But at the same time, you know, if you, if you do have mostly Western Conference teams, I think the the travel um, is something that you have to take into account for – for the players and then the game times. So if you have, you know, all say there's a scenario where you have like all four Western Conference, all four LA team, all four California teams. Let me try that again. All four California teams in the playoffs. You know, they're they're not getting home from work. <laughs> you know, five six o'clock still. And then if you're having those games all start at like seven o'clock Eastern time, that's four o'clock over there. So you're either going to be sacrificing TV viewers by having those games stopping at or starting, excuse me, at 10, 1030, where on the East Coast, most people have worked the next day, so they're not going to be able to watch the entire game. Um, or on the West Coast, you know, if you start them earlier for East Coast, uh, earlier for East Coast viewers, that doesn't really, you know, even if it's an 8 o'clock game, it's 5 o'clock over in California, where, again, you're asking people to, uh, you know, you're probably phasing out some of the hardcore fans over there, um, only because, People obviously have lives that don't revolve around their favorite teams. So it's it's difficult. I like the way that the playoffs are now with the one to eight um, in each conference. But I just like basketball. I know it's not the best teams that are getting into the playoffs. I just like the game, though. And, you know, when you get down to the final four as far as, you know, like the conference finals or even the NBA finals, usually there's not much gripe about the teams that make it there. And at that point, nobody really cares what happened in the first or second rounds. So it would give you two rounds of better basketball. Um, and I think they also talked about shortening the season. I didn't read the whole article. I just kind of read bits and pieces and, like, Cliff's notes of it. And shortening the season is something that I don't think will happen just because there's so much money to be to be gained by playing those extra games. And as far as, like, the load management stuff, I don't know that – the NBA is kind of as concerned about that as they're putting out. The The biggest reason for that is, you know, they, they had the article about the TNT games, and we talked about this on one of our last ones. And, uh, you know, guys like Steph are out, guys like Zion Williamson, so the Warriors and the Pelicans who have uh, a lot of national TV games, you're not going to tune in to see those guys. So automatically that's going to hurt ratings. But, you know, when a guy like Kawhi sits a national televised game, Paul George, LeBron, you know, whoever you want to name, it, I think the NBA can act mad on the outside saying, yeah, you know, we're with the fans. we got to try and find a way to uh, to fix this. But the the NBA knows that the end game for the guys resting is for them to be in the playoffs. So I don't – then they'd rather have the – they'd rather have Kawhi, LeBron James play every game in the playoffs than have them play, you know, an extra 15 – 20 games in the regular season because the playoffs is where, you know, you're going to make more money. It's where the most people are going to be talking about your sport. 
So, you know, it's kind of a catch-22 for the NBA. If they say, you you know, you can't rest guys or they do make some dramatic changes to, like, the load management thing. And then you know, a guy like Kawhi who might actually be hurt, who might actually have, like, this degenerative knee, you know, chronic knee condition or whatever. You know, you're forcing him to play more games. And then the Clippers get into the playoffs and Kawhi's either not 100%, like you saw even Blake Griffin last year, who sat almost the whole, you know, uh, you know almost every game against Milwaukee. You know, if you get a situation like that, that's not fun for, you know, that's not fun for anybody. And that probably hurts the NBA more because you're getting a situation or even like the finals where, you know, people are happy that Toronto won the title. But a lot of that is mired in the controversy of, well, Golden State wasn't with, uh, wasn't with Clay, um, you know, or they weren't with Kevin Durant. And I think you'd rather have the guys healthy in the playoffs than you would for, you know, Clippers, Lakers on TNT or on ESPN earlier. Uh, it does suck not being able to watch those guys. But in, in the end, if you're watching the playoffs, I think it's probably a bigger payoff. That did affect me last year, though, because I went to the Pistons-Lakers game and obviously the Lakers only come here once a year, and LeBron's had out, uh, and I think Lonzo was hurt too. So I, I have been affected by load management. It was, it was a bummer. It was still a fun game to go to. I can't, I can't even remember if they won or lost. But I just know that LeBron and Lonzo didn't play. What else do we have here? Any, any interesting notes from the game? Markel Fultz, 16 points, three assists, four. Four rebounds, a, a little bit of a of a resurgence here, which is nice to see him. Um, nice to see him bounce back. And he's a guy that and me and you no, know, I know a lot of other Pistons fans, at least when he was being uh, shopped last year with um, with Philadelphia, thought the Pistons could you know just kind of take a take a gamble and pick up a guy like Fultz, who obviously was the number one draft pick and who seemed to just be in an in a really bad situation for him. You know, obviously his team was great. The Sixers, you know. Uh, Played really well, you know, if that shot that Kawhi hits against the Sixers doesn't go in, uh, maybe there's a different ending to last year in the playoffs in general. But, um, you know, he, he's played well, and he's played well really as of late and sort of kind of all year. Um, but it's nice to see him and just me being a fan of a guy like Fultz. You know, it's nice to see him move, uh, move, move up the ranks, if you will, and, um, you know, maybe shed – uh, the super bus label that he was that he was already given. Well, it's Markeith Morris played well tonight. Or, I'm sorry, that's Christian Wood. I was looking at not Markeith. Mar Markeith didn't play that well, <laughs> but to, yeah. So you got uh, you got bench contributions. You had um, just a win and then smothering defense in the second half. All very good signs for the Pistons. Take it with the grain of salt and no. It was uh, no, probably part of the competition that they did end up playing, but it's somebody that at least they're close with the stand, in the standings with right now. And if you want to make the playoffs, if you want to beat, if you want to beat these teams in the standings, then you have to beat them on the court. And next up, they do have uh, Charlotte to play, who's kind of in the same situation. And then we can uh, get some vengeance for the the Malik Monk game that uh, that we had a couple days ago, um, probably about a week ago now. But that's what we have to do, do. That's what we have for you guys. Jim Wells, sorry about MSU lost. Yeah, I was actually I was sleeping uh, during the game. So I woke up and then got all the notifications on my phone that Michigan State lost is uh, is very disappointing. They have who they played Georgia and then BYU, maybe if they end up beating Georgia, something like that. But um, there's this. It's OK for it's OK for now. It is more concerning looking at the box score and seeing that uh, Michigan State shooting concerns are more than I would like them to be. But we do have Monday Night Football on with the uh, the greatest quarterback of all time himself in Lamar Jackson. And my Oakland Grizzlies are playing on ESPN+. Plus, so I can see if I can catch the back end of that um, you know, on, on some type of stream. But I will talk to you guys later. We'll definitely be seeing you next time the Pistons play the Hornets which will be Wednesday. We're recording our podcast tomorrow. It will come out Thursday. So hit our link in the description to uh, to find us there, like our page if you haven't already. But comment, post on the wall, follow us on more than just the Facebook, listen to us on Apple Podcasts, listen to us on Podbeam, um, follow us on Twitter, uh, follow us on YouTube for the um, – subscribe on YouTube for all the post-game reactions that we've done to not only the Pistons but other sports as well. 
NFL, the Lions. Again, I was in Chicago, so I didn't get to the embarrassment that happened against Washington. Uh, and I'll try to, I'll try to make Thanksgiving work just with the, um, with, with the food and family and all the fun I'll be having. That might be a little bit difficult, but I'll, I'll try my, I'll try my darndest for you guys to uh, keep pumping these videos out. Um, but yeah. Comment, rate, subscribe, follow our Sports Carnage podcast, and thank you for listening to me ramble on tonight.